Second Corinthians chapter three, uh, chapter one, chapter one, chapter one, verse three to eleven. Here Paul is is talking about his experience concerning uh, difficulties that he went through in his uh, mission of spreading the gospel. So Paul here is uh, talking about uh, his experience while he was with the other apostles or with the other servants uh, doing the work of spreading the gospel or or uh, you know advancing the kingdom of God and uh, he talks about the the, the 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 dangers and the difficulties that they were going through as they did this all the struggles all the adults that were placed in their way all the pain all you know uh, I told you and I encourage you to read the book of Acts please as a as a serious believer read the book of Acts one as a few Read the whole of it. Read the whole of it because in there are great stories of how even uh, the gospel began to, to spread. The gospel began to uh, branch to all areas of the world. One has a few. And it was not easy. At the beginning when Paul was starting his mission together with the other me uh, messengers, the other servants, it was not easy. You, when you read in the book of Acts, you encounter the difficulties, the, the, the troubles that Paul ran into in his, in his quest to make sure that the gospel reaches every part of the world. So uh, I have about six facts about uh, suffering, Christian suffering. Number one is uh, that uh, in verse 3 of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Number one thing that you need to know when you are suffering as a Christian, number one thing that you need to remind yourself, one thing that you need to bear in mind and let it go into your heart, is that God is a merciful Father. God is a merciful Father. The God that you worship, the God that... You, you claim in your Christianity, you claim a relationship with. He is a merciful father. What does this mean in our suffering? What does this mean in our suffering? You know, when we talk about a merciful father, we are talking about a combination of love, a combination of care, a combination of concern, a combination of help and support. Somebody who is merciful is is loving. Somebody who is merciful is caring. Somebody who is merciful is concerned, or he, he, he concerns them. They concern themselves with 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 the the affairs of others. One has a few. 
they are helpful they are supportive because they have mercy mercy drives them to this god will never let his children languish in suffering mercy when someone is is merciful will be concerned about others bwana asifiwe because god is merciful he will not ignore you bwana asifiwe he will not let you languish because he is merciful his character is mercy he cannot allow that he cannot allow his children his beloved children when you are saved you are a child of god bwana asifiwe bwana asifiwe when you are saved you are a child of god you need to understand that the moment you get saved you become a child of god and what do we mean by a child of god what you understand by by being a child of someone that is what we mean one as few we may know uh, we may know the connection that exists between them and their children you know that we may have a very strong connection with their children maybe because they carried them for nine months and they were in their body and they shared everything within their body they have a very special connection so when we say because even in the bible uh, there is somewhere that is written i think it's in isaiah that is there a woman a mother who can forget the a child who is breastfeeding can you so our relationship with god or our childhood relationship child child relationship with god is likened to that of a child and a, and a mother one as a few so you are a child of god and god will not see you suffering because mothers will never see their children crying even when their children cry they want to know what is going on every suffering god allows as a good purpose one as a few one as a few every in in the in the lives of the children of god sufferings do not come by their own one as a few and a suffering will not or a pain or or a struggle will not happen in your life unless god has allowed one as a few because as uh, uh, god has the power to prevent some things from coming into your life he has the power but when he allows anything that will cause you pain to come into your life it has a good purpose one as few you remember in romans 8 verse 28 uh, paul says everything works for the good of those who love it one as few the fact number two about christian suffering is that god is the source of all comfort god is the source of all comfort verse 3b verse 3b second corinthians 1 verse 3b the father of mercies and god of all comfort father of mercies and god of all comfort not only is our god a god of mercy but it's also god of all comfort and i want you to underline the word whole you underline the word whole because that is very important for you to note because when we talk about whole we talk about every every comfort that you desire in life one as a few when do you need comfort when do you need comfort when you are disturbed when you are anxious when you are fearful when you are going through a difficult time when you are sorrowing you need comfort all these times what it here means it means that every time you require any comfort god has that kind of comfort one as if you were it is available in god one as if you were so you have nowhere else and all again means that the kind of comfort that god offers is sure so it is very important to you, for you to know that the ultimate comfort whenever you need comfort you run where whenever you need comfort you run where to god it is not found elsewhere even even if you can find some comfort from somewhere or from someone it is not enough hallelujah because god is the one who possesses the ultimate or the complete or the required what comfort one as if you so the only source of our comfort is god and this comfort means it doesn't mean that 
You know when you when you hear that God will comfort you in times of your troubles or in times of your anxiousness or fear you think that he will take away that sometimes you ask oh i've been faithful to god i have never sinned against god i have done my level best to connect with god to walk with god what is this happening to me why is this happening to me yet i'm a, a loyal servant of god i'm a committed i'm a committed person to god why are this you know most of the time we as human beings and we as believers we ask such questions when we are going through difficulties struggles storms upon storms when as if you when as if you you know sometimes double triple storms come our way and we ask why it doesn't mean that because we are christians or because god offers comfort it means that these things will disappear they may not disappear when as if you but it means that God will give us the strength that we need at such a time. One as if you God will give us the encouragement that we need at such a time. One as if you God will give us the hope. Hallelujah. This life that we are living is about hope. We live by hope. One as if you And the greatest hope, the ultimate hope, is what God has offered through his work. One as if you because he assures us that despite the difficulties and the struggles and the pain and suffering, he doesn't promise us that these things will disappear in our lifetime. No, he doesn't. There is nowhere that there is a guarantee that there will be no suffering in this world. But he assures us that there is light at the end. There is light at the end of the time. After all these struggles, after all these troubles, and that is why Paul said, we are wasting away on the outside, but inside we are being built. We are being built because we are going somewhere. One has a few. And at the right time, all things will be brought to completion. Hallelujah. We hold on. We, we, we clutch on it. And that is why Paul was ready to suffer the more he could. He was ready to be killed because he knew I'm going somewhere where there is victory. One as if you. Where there is no disease. Our revelation, is it uh, chapter 21, verse 4? There is, we are going somewhere where there is no disease, there is no death. Number three. Number three. I've said number one is God is a merciful father. The things that you should bear in mind when you are going through difficult situations. Or when you are going through stress. Number two, God is the source of all comfort. And number three, more suffering for Christ more comfort through Christ. One as a few. One as a few. The more you suffer for Christ, and this now is purely uh, our spiritual lives. You know there is suffering that comes with our spiritual lives? You know that? There is, there is a suffering that is caused by our spirituality. The more you suffer for Christ, the more comfort you will receive from Christ. One as a few. And that is what Paul says in verse 5. First Corinthians two, uh, Second Corinthians one, verse five. Second Corinthians one, verse five. Paul says, "For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ." One as few. In Acts chapter four, verse uh, Acts chapter nine, verse four. Again, this is Paul when he was being converted. As soon as he was converted, Acts chapter nine, verse four to five and five. Let's read in Acts, Matendo Yamitume, Acts chapter 9, verse 4 and 5. It says, And he fell on the ground, and heard a voice saying to him, This is Paul. He heard a voice uh, saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting who was Paul persecuting who was Paul persecuting Christians and why is Jesus saying here you are persecuting me why is Jesus saying you are persecuting me yet the, the people whom Paul was persecuting was not Jesus it was the Christians what does that mean when he was persecuting Christians he was actually persecuting Christ. Because when we get saved, 
We are joined with Christ. Bwana asifiwe. So anything done to you, anything that happens in your life, it's like it's happening to who? To Christ. Bwana asifiwe. He identifies with us in every way. Bwana asifiwe. When you read in Hebrews, you will see that Jesus Christ for 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 people who are saved, Jesus Christ identifies with us in every way. Not only when we are doing the right things before God. Even when we are suffering, Jesus Christ identifies with us. Hallelujah. That is why he came in the body of a human. So that he can go through everything that we, we will go through on earth. And so that he is able to understand. And so that we do not think that he, he doesn't know about our bodies. Buonasifiwe. He knows the pain and suffering. So Jesus Christ identifies with us. And the more we suffer, the more he comforts us. One as few. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. This is Jesus Christ talking. He says, come to me who? Hold you who are weary and heavy laden. And I will give you what? Rest. Move on to verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What does it feel? I explained this one time. And mostly we think that this verse refers to the sinners. No. No. What does it feel? It refers to us, the believers. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying, if you feel heavy in your faith, in your journey of salvation, in your life as a believer, come to me, Buana Sifiwe, so that I can take away that, that, that weight, that burden that is weighing you down. Buana Sifiwe. And he uses the example of the yoke because the Jews understood this because they used to use bulls or cattle to, to, to plow. These guys understood because he kitu yok, yok ni nini? Nile kitu inaunganisha, dume wawili, wanapovuta nini? Jembe, ama hata wanapovuta, eh, kama ni kubeba maji, ama kubeba chochote, that mukokote ni ya, ya punda. So, kwa nini inawekwa wawili? Kwa nini wanawekwa wawili? Yeah? Ili wawe nao, uwezo. Moja asiumia. Ukiona the more the mzigo, the more the punda suinya wanawekwa. Ama the, the cows. So Jesus anasema, tuko pamoja mkabala. Mkabala ni side by side. Wana asipiwe. Tuko pamoja mkabala. So mkisikia ikisemwa msi changanyikiwe tena. Nimewasaidia mnipigie makofi. <laughs> tuko pamoja mkabala. Ukionekana kana kwamba imekulemea hiyo hiyo kitu umewekwa mimi niko hapa kando yako bwana asifiwe na mimi nimechukua mahali mzito zaidi bwana asifiwe kwa hivyo inamaanisha bado utakuwa na sehemu yako lakini eh, anakusaidia bwana asifiwe so the more suffering we go through the more the comfort we will receive from christ bwana asifiwe